Okay, now we will have Dr. Petrov return to the podium and report on his safety trial uh, in Bulgaria. Please come and visit Bulgaria. It's a nice place. Uh, okay, it's uh, quite difficult for the eyes to, to believe what the brain cannot understand. It's uh, really difficult for us with uh, the knowledge until now or until two years ago to believe that uh, the multiple sclerosis is uh, really a progressive neurodegenerative disease but most probably with a primary vascular uh, venous cause. Uh, you know these statistics, it was uh, very well elucidated this, uh, these days. It, uh, for me, it was impressive to, to read that Dr. Falk in 1948 named the pathoanatomical changes observed in MS patients periphlebitis. Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. The pioneering work of Dr. Zamboni, you know, uh, placed on the, first, uh, on the first place the CCSVI and also the, the incidence of CCSVI first, and secondary, the quite a beneficial result of uh, balloon angioplasty of, the, of this vascular pathology. Uh, she, uh, he described uh, quite a uh, good improvement after the successful endovascular treatment, but of course, there are a lot of negative publications also. Uh, even uh, in the literature, uh, never published, uh, there were several, uh, several reports only, uh, also including uh, about stent migration and, and uh, other big problems. And uh, this raised the question, not only about the existence of CCSVI, but also about the safety of the endovascular procedure. There, as uh, Marian had said, there are also positive uh, publications beside the Dr. Zamboni publication, uh, also the publication that uh, Marian just had uh, uh, mentioned, their publication about the safety and the early results, it's uh, quite positive. Uh, from February 2010, we treated uh, 948 patients, uh, treating 2.3 lesions per patient. Uh, with CCSVI and a uh, couple of weeks ago uh, our publication about uh, safety of endovascular treatment appeared into the Journal of Endovascular Therapy. Our protocol of our registry is prospective data collection after informed consent uh, uh, assignment. Uh, the follow-up is on the first day, uh, first mount, third mount and sixth mount with Doppler ultrasound, independent neural evaluation, and the quality of life questionnaire. Uh, we uh, included in this uh, registry 40, uh, 461 patients. They represent 97.6% of the 472 patients uh, screened for CCSVI. So this is our rate of CCSVI uh, established in uh, MS patients. Uh, we have treated uh, in, uh, most, uh, in most of the patients more than one lesion, even more than two, two, two veins, and uh, with a quite uh, good rate of uh, azygous uh, vein treatment also. The mean duration of the, of the disease, of the MS, was uh, about 10 years. Uh, the baseline EDSS score was uh, 5.22. Uh, there were something else. It's uh, between the, the age. The age is uh, between 19 and 79 years of the patients, uh, a little more females than males. Uh, what about the protocol? As I mentioned, our preferred uh, technique is uh, the balloon angioplasty. So the optimal balloon angioplasty with achieving good flow is the preferred strategy. Also using cutting balloons, scoring balloons, uh, additional wires in a scoring manner. Uh, but uh, in some indication, as I have shown, we are using also stents. We are using a uh, low dose of uh, anticoagulant, antithrombin, direct antithrombin, dabigatran. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, three months for the balloon angioplasty and six months for the stented. 
several clinical cases. Um, this is a good picture to mention that uh, uh, the predilective sites of stenosis are three, just below the bulbous in the middle segment and in the place of the valve, it's not uh, seen here. Uh, a patient with total occlusion with quite a good result after uh, um, the angioplasty of the... Uh, this is the so-called uh, uh, bird uh, peak uh, sign, it's very well seen. I, into the IVUS investigation, it was very well seen that the valve is uh, malformatic and there is a very thickened wall uh, at the site of the valve. And uh, in some cases, uh, even in case of very thickened wall of the, of the place of the valve, the result is quite good with uh, simple balloon and geoplasty like in this case. But uh, in other cases, we need scoring and cutting balloons, even kissing balloons in order to overcome the resistance of the lesion. In case of, uh, uh, as uh, also uh, Dr. Zamboni has shown in his publication, the uh, result of uh, PTA of azigos vein is quite good, so the patency rate is uh, uh, very high and the risk stenosis rate is uh, uh, almost twice uh, uh, lower than the, the into the jugular. So it's a critical stenosis of the uh, azigos vein. My approach is to inject contrast into the lower part below the, the diaphragm in order to, to take a look at the all, all the, uh, all the azigos vein. And after ballooning, most of the azigos uh, lesions uh, responding very well to ballooning, but in case of uh, severe twisting, we are implanting also stents with quite a good result. This is the statistics about uh, sizes and uh, and uh, the dimensions of the stents and the balloons that we have using. Uh, the, the average diameter of the balloon is uh, 12 millimeter into the right jugular and 11.9 into the left and 8.9 into the azigos. Uh, we are using CASA <coughs> diagnostic maneuver. Uh, I'm using many times uh, a compliant balloon uh, inflated in a low, low pressure in order to see where is the waste. And at the same place, uh, this place I'm inflating as a second step uh, non-compliant or uh, a cutting balloon in order to optimize uh, locally just the, the place of the annulus or the place of the most prominent thickening of, of the wall. Uh, okay. What about safety? Uh, we had uh, no one big complication, no one death, major bleeding or clinical deterioration, no one uh, urgent surgery. We had uh, several growing hematoma, not very big, only one uh, has to be revised uh, surgically. It happened on the next day, not on the same day of the procedure. Our patients are staying in the hospital overnight. Uh, so it's not outpatient procedure. Uh, we had several patients with rhythm and conductance disorders because sometimes the wire is going into the right ventricle, but it's uh, maybe a problem of the learning curve. Nowadays, it's almost uh, no uh, rhythm disorders. Uh, and uh, we had uh, two vein ruptures, azigos vein ruptures, uh, both of them were resolved uh, with uh, prolonged balloon inflation and, and uh, stenting without the need of surgical procedure with uh, quite a good result uh, by uh, flow point of view. We had several dissections, uh, but minor dissections, I, I, I have shown one, one of them that uh, were resolved uh, without any problem with prolonged balloon inflation, or lo low pressure or uh, with stenting. It's, uh, what about the, uh, the efficacy? Uh, we had, as I mentioned uh, before, we had uh, risk stenosis in the uh, uh, combined risk stenosis rhythmosis rate of 32%. And uh, the clinical follow-up showed uh, functional improvement in 62.5% uh, of the patients. Uh, it was uh, very interesting and uh, it's important to emphasize that in this 19% uh, of the patients that uh, they had clinical deterioration in the, into the follow-up period, all of them had restenosis. All of these patients had restenosis into the follow-up period. Uh, it was interesting uh, to 
to discern uh, what is the reason of the almost immediate improvement that we often see on the table. Uh, we didn't believe into the iron deposition because the iron deposition cannot uh, disappear immediately after the procedure. So we started to search uh, another mechanism. <coughs> and we assumed that the chronic hypoxia and hypercapnia may play a role. And uh, there are many data that the elevated carbon dioxide levels impair brain activity and metabolism in conscious humans, uh, like in uh, COPD or uh, in uh, Alpinist, uh, there are uh, symptoms very similar to the, to the, to the symptoms of, uh, of MS, fatigue, headache, uh, brain fog, and so on. So um, uh, yesterday it was very well uh, elucidated by Mark and Robert that uh, in, the, in the last years, uh, in the last year, in fact, uh, there are a lot of publications showing that uh, in the uh, MS patients uh, we have uh, ischemia-like injury. Uh, we had uh, oxidized the DNA, mitochondrial injury, lipid peroxidation, increased apoptosis, respiratory deficient neurons, uh, all uh, are typical for ischemia. Uh, so the purpose of uh, our uh, sub-study about the blood gas analysis was to compare the blood gas analysis in patients with CCSVI and MS versus healthy control. The so-called so healthy control in most of the cases were coronary patients because we are uh, a cardiology and angiology department. And the second end point was to explore the changes in the blood gas analysis after the treatment. Uh, we uh, have studied uh, 178 patients with CCSVI positive and 50 control groups at uh, standard conditions. We took samples from the femoral vein and the jugular vein. And uh, we saw in the MS group significant difference between the femoral and, and jugular side with uh, hypercapnia, significant hypoxemia, and uh, desaturation of the jugular, jugular blood. This difference uh, is not more than 10% of the uh, uh, among the, the common population. So it's a huge difference. This is the difference between the CCSVI group and the control group. Also, it's a big difference uh, with the hypercapnia into the jugular uh, uh, vein gas analysis and uh, desaturation and decrease uh, partial pressure of the, of the uh, oxygen. And just immediately after the, the, the angioplasty, the endovascular treatment, there is improvement in all the three parameters. The hypercapnia improved, the oxygenation improved, and the partial pressure of the oxygen also improved after the procedure. It uh, matches very well with the findings that uh, into the hyperbaric hyperbaric oxygenation chamber, uh, the patients can read, they don't have headache. And uh, after going out of the hyperbaric oxygenation chamber, uh, they uh, start again to, to feel uh, not, not so good. It's, uh, we were asking ourselves, uh, where is the reason of this uh, improvement in the, into the blood gas analysis? And uh, uh, maybe the most probable reason is the I almost immediate re restoration of the microcirculation. And we tried to prove also this. We examined nine patients with uh, uh, SPECT, with uh, technetium, so brain scintigraphy. And we saw a huge improvement into the perfusion. You see these white spots before treatment and asymmetria left to right disappeared totally after the treatment with full circle of brain perfusion and with uh, uh, restoration of the brain perfusion after the treatment. So, in summary, compared to the femoral vein gas analysis in the MS group, the jugular vein gas analysis shows unusual difference consisting of hypercapnia, hypoxemia, and desaturation. Jugular vein blood gas analysis in CCA's, uh, CCSVI is remarkable with hypercapnia, hypoxemia, and desaturation with statistically significant difference compared to the control group. And the intervention or treatment is may, maybe most important, leads to mild immediate improvement of the gas exchange disturbances. Uh, this is uh, the witness of one of our patients. Uh, she wrote to us, I feel like coming back to life, seeing true colors with contrast 
as if someone clean up a dirty windscreen. And also, this is interesting, my GP was completely excited and impressed by my behavior following the treatment. And so she had, uh, uh, she, uh, she had been on uh, treatment me medication uh, since many years and his GP uh, was asking herself, uh, uh, asking her what is the new medication that she is taking. <laughs> so uh, the new medication is the CCSVI endovascular treatment. As a conclusion, I would say that the CCSVI is strongly associated with MS and the endovascular treatment of CCSVI is feasible and safe as shown. Method, but methods and strategies reducing late vein restenosis, rethrombosis have to be elaborated because the clinical result is strongly dependent on the vascular patency. Uh, I want to invite you to our Bulgarian endovascular course. It will take place in December from 9 to 11 of December in Sofia. And thank you for your attention.